In this video, we're going to tell you how to plan a safari, including where to go, how to get there, and also answer one of the hardest questions you will encounter, and that's how to pick out a safari company. Very nice. We'll tell you what to look for in a company, and better yet, we will give you our recommendation on the best safari company to use for the trip of a lifetime. This is part of our True Safari series. ton of people over there. Must be something good. So where to go on a safari? That's the hardest or second hardest question you will have to answer. We're all chasing this cheetah. I don't think I've seen this many cars together. Do you want to see the big five? Stand up guy. Then head over to Kenya or Tanzania in East Africa. Stand back up. Oh my god, he's pretty. Mm -hmm. He's moving. He's on the move, Chris. Chris, he's yawning. I know. Or do you want to see some silverback gorillas? <laughs> I just see cheetah butt. If so, then go to Rwanda, Uganda, or the Congo, all in Central Africa. He looks like a kitty cat. See his paws go up there? Uh huh. His murder mittens. <laughs> I see his head. We specifically wanted to see the great wildebeest migration. So we narrowed our search down to Kenya or Tanzania. It's watching something, doesn't it? Yeah. We ultimately chose Kenya for reasons I'll get into, but both Kenya or Tanzania are gonna be great options. Kenya invented the safari, so in turn, they have better infrastructure and transportation. They will also have more lodging options and safari operators, which will make it cheaper, but not a whole lot cheaper. It's looking at the Thompson Gazelle. Is that what it is? Oh boy. If you go to Kenya, you will probably go to the Masai Mara. And if you go to Tanzania, it's going to be the Serengeti. Both the Masai Mara and Tanzania share a border. So it may come down to the time of year of your trip. Are you able to get a space crystal? Oh yeah. Got a whole memory card full of If you're traveling between August and November, and want to see the Great Migration, which we recommend, then go to the Masai Mara. The rest of the year, the herds move through the Serengeti. Look at that buffalo, just looking at him. So the Masai Mara is going to be smaller and more condensed. So if you don't mind a bit more traffic, you can see the animals faster in Kenya than in Tanzania. However, you will have to put up with some traffic jams like the one we just went through. But right now we're in Amboseli and it's even smaller than the Masai Mara, so the crowds can be even bigger. It's busy. To see the differences between Amboseli and the Masai Mara, check out our videos of chapters 2 and 3. So why not go to both Kenya and Tanzania? We thought about it, but for starters, you would have to get two visas. And it's a lot of traveling. And for the most part, I really think you'll see most of the same animals. What are they doing? They want to fight. They want to fight? I didn't know if they were... Those are nice. Even if you don't even have a referee. <laughs> they had two fighting and one watching. So unless you can do a really long trip, just do yourself a favor and pick one place. The Masai Mara in Kenya is also where the Maasai tribes people live. So it's a great place to see a little bit of African culture. Another consideration for us, since we only wanted to stay in one country, was whether Kenya or Tanzania had the best beaches 
and snorkeling and scuba diving. The good news is both countries have fantastic beaches and diving. In Kenya, you would go to Mombasa, and in Tanzania, Zanzibar is going to be the best option. We will have some snorkeling and scuba diving videos from Diani Beach in Mombasa out soon. We have two types of those. So if you have two weeks and don't mind searching over a bigger space, go to Tanzania. But if you don't have that much time and want to save a little bit of money, then go to Kenya. Both places are going to be fantastic. We absolutely loved Kenya, but hope to make it to Tanzania someday. Peeing on that chair again. Get off that! You're peeing in the chair. Day two at Ambaselli. It's uh, it's about six thirty in the morning. We're actually not doing an early drive. We're gonna leave right after breakfast at seven thirty. Go see a ton more animals. Can't believe how many animals we saw yesterday. I think we saw more animals yesterday than I thought we would see on the whole trip. It was pretty, uh, pretty amazing. Tons of elephants, giraffes, too many zebras to count, a hyena, buffalo, hippos, lots of birds. I don't know, a lot of stuff. In chapter one, I said we'd be answering a lot of questions on how to do a safari. If you haven't watched chapter one, definitely do that. It gives a good overview of the series. And in chapters four and five, we showed our first ever game drive and showed you just how many animals you can expect to see and some adorable baby lion cubs. Well, this is the next day, and we do a morning drive in Ampicelli, and it starts off with a bang. Let's show this drive and get into how to plan a safari. Oh my gosh, that omelet was amazing. The food here is incredible. Those guys uh, who made the omelets, pretty, pretty cool. Shannon, you look dressed for safari. Okay. <laughs> Over to get this huge male elephant. So after you pick a country, how do you get there? We live in the U.S. We flew 2.5 hours to North Carolina, then eight hours over to London, then another nine hours to Nairobi. It was a long trip. With layovers, it took us almost 26 hours to get there. So if you go to Kenya, you will probably land in Nairobi. I would plan on getting a hotel the first day you get there and then start your safari in the morning. This telephoto lens is coming in handy, or wide lens. It makes this room look like it's not nine square feet. Well, we made it to our hotel room. We've been traveling for about 24 hours. Ah, exhausted. This room is tiny. It looks exactly like where we stayed in New Zealand. It's nice though. It's very nice. 
We stayed at Ibis Styles, and the rooms were small, but very nice. And the food at the rooftop restaurant was incredible. It's nice here. Our flights were about $3,300 USD total for the two of us. So whether you go to the Masai Mara or Amboseli, it's going to be about another five or six hour drive to get there on bumpy roads. Just follow the cars. So the hardest question, probably even harder than choosing where to go on a safari, is picking a company to book your safari through. We read horror stories about people paying lots of money for their safaris, then the company goes bankrupt and they lost it all. Can't believe how close you get to the animals. You can find companies with good reviews on TripAdvisor, Safari Bookings, and other review sites and that's a good place to start but you will also want to see how long the company has been in business oh is there oh, yep i see them that lower thing is it the one with the bird on them? yeah i think it's them i mean they all have birds on them but after you've picked out a few companies read up on them and also contact them are they quick to respond do they answer your questions we found the prices of safari companies to be very different. You do often get what you pay for, but there's no reason to overpay. Some of these real low budget companies may just pick you up in a minibus and your driver may not even be a safari guide or speak the same language. Also, if you go during the high season, a lot of these reputable companies and resorts are gonna fill up a full year ahead of time. So don't wait until the last minute. We started planning well in advance, and when we finally decided to book it eight months before the trip, two of the three places we were going to stay were already full. We had to find new lodging in both Amboseli and the Masai Mara. So planning that far ahead of time, what if something happens and you can't make it on your trip? Please. Yes. There's another group which is coming with a baby. Well, I suggest that you buy travel insurance. Insurance should cover the trip if you can't go on it, but more importantly, it will cover the costs if you get half eaten by a lion and have to be medevaced to a nearby hospital. Don't worry, that's not gonna happen. My mom, I, I hit stop record and I think I'm recording. <laughs> but you could sustain a smaller injury or get sick and need medical care. Insurance is not super cheap though. We booked with Artie and it cost $550 for the both of us. So with a good safari company, you will know your exact itinerary, your meal plans and lodging, and the type of vehicle you will be in. It took us days or maybe weeks to figure out the safari company we were gonna use. And there are several good companies out there, but after a lot of research, we chose Spirit of Kenya. I heard a lot of them, a big herd of them died last year because yeah, of the drought. Yeah, because of drought. We lost a lot, especially the young ones. Oh. Oh, that's cool. Spirit of Kenya was founded by an African and a European that thought everyone should be able to experience the most incredible places in the world, luxurious or budget, at a fair price. If you are looking for a safari company, just stop looking and book with Spirit of Kenya. They were fantastic. Oh, that's funny. George, or Jorge, our trip organizer, 
was extremely responsive and helped us come up with an itinerary that fit our budget. We found their prices to be very competitive. Jorge also answered all our crazy questions we had about the safari, even after we booked. And a safari tour guide can make or break the trip. You will want someone that is very knowledgeable about animals and where to find them. Also, make sure your guide speaks the same language as you. You can have the best guide in the world, but it won't matter if you can't understand them. And uh, this smell during the breeding season, uh -huh. it turns more pinkish. Oh, okay. Yes. To attract the females? Yeah. Our guide Rufus was awesome. It's been a very long trip. I feel like we're finally getting started between the uh, trip to Charlotte and then another eight hours to London and then eight hours to Nairobi. We're finally here. I think this is our car. So the Spirit of Kenya on the side. Weather here is phenomenal. Looks like it's gonna be 75 during the day and 55 at night. Right now it feels wonderful. <sighs> All that hard work. I feel like finally getting ready to get started. Yep, this work. That's all, yeah? Yeah. Hi, I'm Shannon. This is my wife, Shannon. Shannon. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. I feel like our trip's finally starting. <laughs> so much work to get here. So, we are starting our trip. Ah, I'm excited. We are going down to Amboseli. Okay. Yeah. So, welcome on board. Thank, Thank you. you. We're excited. <laughs> Rufus picked us up at our hotel in Nairobi and was with us the entire time from Amboseli to Lake Navasha, then to the Masai Mara. He was with us until he dropped us back off in Nairobi nine days later. Oh, they still our stuff? Yes, they are very stubborn. <laughs> he took care of everything, so it was very relaxing for us. All we had to do is decide what time and type of game drives we wanted to do. Yeah. <laughs> Look at the camera. Uh, uh, the problem it will do, it will pee on the seats. That's it. I tell you, it's not a good one. He did, he already peed. <laughs> if you guys do go on a safari and have a good guide, make sure to tip them well. It's so close. So to see it 10 feet away in the daytime? I say we are the only ones who have seen it. Otherwise you could find vehicles in Alright. Thanks Jorge, Rufus, and Spirit of Kenya. We will definitely go with you guys for our next safari as well. I should note that we are not affiliated with Spirit of Kenya, Artie, or anyone else I mentioned in this video. But Spirit of Kenya did request some photos to use on their Instagram account. So I hope we answered how to get started planning a safari. To see the best time of year to go, recommendations on lodging and vehicles, and many more tips, all you have to do once that video is out is click right here. Make sure to check out our other chapters, and let's go do some stuff. <laughs>